Does this put a damper on everything, the weather, or what? Yeah. We need to get so fired up that it gets dry around here, amen? Yeah. Amen? amen. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Amen. We're going to be in uh, the Gospel of Mark this morning. Mark chapter 16, we're going to look at resurrection life. Because that's what Jesus did. He brought resurrection life. He not just didn't only bring life, but He brought resurrection life. Not only in the next life, but in this life. Christ died for our sins so we can live. That's what He did. Do you have life now? Because a lot of people have life now, don't they? I mean, I believe it's okay. Just move it back. You don't need it? Yeah, to stand. But you know what? The real life begins when you give your heart to Jesus. A lot of you talk through most of the worship. So I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't talk during the message. Is that okay? If somebody talks next to you, just elbow them really good in the ribs, okay? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Can I tell them? This is important. Because it's God's word. And you know what? When we show up at a meeting like this, this is what's important. You know what's important? Jesus. That was it. Thank you. You guys agree? Yeah. He's the most important person in this meeting. And the Bible says where two or three are gathered, guess what? He's, in the he's there. He's right here, walking among us. Isn't that cool? And he's risen from the dead. He can, you know, this is what we call Passion Week. Two thousand years ago Christ came. And this is the week where everything happened. Where Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 was fulfilled that he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey on the day that it was prophesied. He rode it. You know what? Everything was fulfilled this week. There's so many scriptures fulfilled. He rose from the dead. I'll tell you what, if that doesn't excite you, then you're dead. Okay. Now, either you're alive to Christ or you're dead to Christ. If you're alive, this week is exciting to you and it's exciting to me. Man, I love the Lord. God is so good. You know, I got I got went out on my front porch this morning at about four in the morning. It, usually I'm not on my front porch at four in the morning. But this morning I was out there watching it drizzle. Damn. And I prayed. Did you guys pray that the rain would stop the drizzling? Yep. I guess we ain't got the faith of Elijah, huh? <laughs> But it's still drizzling, and I guess some of you need a baptism, amen? But, but uh, you know, I went out there and looked, and I just went, you know, Lord, whatever you want. But uh, you know what it shows? You guys are awesome, man. You come out in the rain and sit there and listen to a knucklehead like me. That's just amazing. And that way, you, you, the reason you did it is because you love Jesus, amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray and we'll get into the morning. Father, we love you, Lord. You're so awesome. We thank you, God, for your word. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. Apart from Him, we're, we're nothing. Apart from Him, we don't have life. If Jesus is not risen, we're pitiful. We're miserable. We're hopeless. But He is risen. He's rose from the dead. And there's so much proof. And there's so much proof, Lord. I pray that this morning as we read Your Word, that God, You would just minister to our hearts. Help us, Lord, to draw close to You this very hour in Jesus' name. And the church said? Amen. Amen. We're going to read uh, Mark chapter 16, and we're going to read verse 1 through 14. Ready? Here we go. When, that when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices that they might come and anoint them. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? And when they looked, looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in, long, in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, as he said to you. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now when he arose early 
on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After that, he appeared in other form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at a table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. So we see just the, the picture of what's going on here. A lot of times we look at these stories in the Bible and we look at them as just stories, but these are things that actually happen. And whenever something happens like this, like a death, it really takes you into a whole other arena. And that's where these people were. The mother looking at her son being crucified and murdered, basically, by the Roman soldiers. And after something like that happens, you go into a stage of, man, I'm bummed down. You, uh, there's a lot of tears. You're wiped out. You're hurting. And that's what happens when a death comes. And, and that's the natural side of this whole thing. The, the physical, the natural side of it is that they had gathered in homes and they were crying and they were talking about it. And how many times when something happens do you say, if only I would have? And some type of guilt comes upon you. How many people do that? Did you have some type of guilt upon you? Everybody does that. Pray for the Gonzalez family. There was a young man murdered last night. Stabbed to death. 18 years old. One of his family members and friends is here this morning. He asked me to tell all of you to pray for this young man. His name was James Gonzalez, and, and he was stabbed to death. And there's no doubt in my mind right now, this very minute, this family is sitting in a home somewhere, and they're crying, and they can't believe what has happened to their family. And that's how this family was. They were crying, they were wiped out, and we don't see that. We just read it on the pages, and we can't take it to heart because we don't know it. We don't feel it. But at the same time all this was going on, what's going on is there was a supernatural thing going on in the spirit realm. What was going on? When they were all crying and they were gathering in their homes, Jesus Christ went into the depths of the earth, a place called Abraham's bosom in Luke chapter 16. You read about it. And he went down there and it says he preached to the people down there. He went down there and he saw Moses and Elijah and Noah and all the saints. Rachel and, and Adam and Eve. And all of them. They were down there in Abraham's bosom. And he down, went down there and began to preach to them. While, the, while they were wiped out, hurting him. And you know, this last week and a half, there's been deaths around us. A good brother named Andy and a, a good friend, man. He gave me a tattoo years ago. He went home to be with the, the Lord a week ago Friday. Pastor Carlos at our church, his wife went home to be with the Lord last week. These are people that are hurting. But while they're hurting, guess what's going on? On the other side, there is a supernatural thing going on. They're alive. The loved ones they're crying for are alive. They're on the other side, and they're rejoicing and having a blast. Isn't that kind of a bummer that we're on this side all bummed out and they're over there having a good time? It's like, dang, that doesn't seem good. But you know what? That's the way it is. And if you really believe in the resurrection, guess what? That's what happens. But it only happens if you're born again. You must be born again to see the kingdom of God. You must have resurrection life in order for you to get on the other side and rejoice. If you don't have resurrection life, guess what? When you get on the other side, you will not be rejoicing. You're going to be burning like a sausage on Sunday morning, and that's a fact. Now, right now, that might seem nice because it's so cold out. In fact, I wish global warming would hurry up, don't you? But uh, that's not the way it is on the other side. So the you know, main thing is make sure on this side. And so we got these women going to the tomb, and in other gospels we have Peter and John racing to the tomb. And and when they get there, in verse three, this is what they say. And they said among themselves, "Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us?" But when they looked up, <laughs> they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. Now, you know, in order for resurrection life in any way, here on the other, there has to be death, doesn't there? And I'm going to look at that in a little bit, that even when we're alive, there has to be death. 
It has, there has to be a death for you to come alive. But right here, the stone, they, they, they want the stone to get rolled away. But, but you know, in death, you know how many people die every second? 1.7 people die every second. You guys know that? Every minute, 107 people die every minute. Every hour, 6,390 people die around the world every hour. Every day, 153,000 people die. Do you think death is an issue in this world? Go like this. Hey, I'm going home today and I go up over that bridge and guess what's on the right side? A cemetery. Right there. Every city has one. As you tell all of us, death is an issue. We better think about it because there's coming a time. But right here, she had to have the stone rolled away. These ladies had to have the stone rolled away. So they're thinking, who's going to roll away this stone for us as they're going up there? And you know, a lot of us are in that place in our life. We get things in our life that only God can remove. Do you guys know that? Only God can remove certain things. It's a supernatural thing in our life. And only God can do it. And you, this is what we do. This is what we have a tendency to do. We have a tendency to look to things to solve our problems. In other words, like programs. Has that ever, anybody ever, I'm not, not, putting, not putting down programs. I think programs are cool. But when a program doesn't lead you to Jesus, they're missing the point. If the program is just a program to get you cleaned up, that's all it does is get you cleaned up on your way to hell. It doesn't work. And so many people are trying to roll away the stone just like here by a program. How many people went to AA, NA, and then you go to the DA? Amen? <laughs> because a lot of times those programs don't work. It takes you right back to where you started, to the courthouse. Because it doesn't work. It, you know, it, it might clean you up. But, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, I went to those meetings for a while. And then I, it was closed one night, and I got a 502 because I went out and got drunk. It wasn't working. I was just going to get out of going to jail. But there are some AA meetings that lead people to Jesus. There are some NA meetings that lead people to Jesus. So some of them are good. And sometimes it's a relationship. Some people look to a relationship, a husband, a wife. They say, if I can just get this, if I can get just get this, if I only had a friend. And they think that's going to do it. But it doesn't. Even religion. You guys realize that religion is not going to do it. You see JWs out there, Jehovah's Witnesses? And man, they work hard, don't they? I see them out there and they got the, those uh, little magazines they peddle all the time. And, and but, but it's not that they're zealous. You guys know that? It's not like they have a zeal for God. The reason they do that is because they feel like they have to do that to earn their way into heaven or earn their way into life on earth. That's what they think. And so that's the reason they're out there doing all this stuff. I feel sorry for them. Pray for Jehovah's Witnesses. I wish Christians would get out like Jehovah's Witnesses do. But it ain't going to roll the stone away. It ain't going to give you life. And then, you know, the Muslims do the same thing. They think that by strapping a bomb to them and blowing a bunch of people up, that they're going to get, what is it, 70 virgins when they get to wherever it is they're going? It actually was 70 Virginians and they all have guns, amen? <laughs> but none of that stuff works. You know, it's the stone. What I'm talking about is really the stone of unbelief and the stone of doubt and all those stones that get in our way of, of the Lord. How many people this week just said, you know what, I would, but. I would do this, but. There's all kinds of things keeping us from serving the Lord. And when it says, in verse 4, it says, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been 